add the mesh into the swag. I am going to do ruffles. So we are going to cut um, about half yard pieces. Doesn't have to be exact. Um, just cut about 18 inches per piece and you'll be good. I'm going to start by cutting probably like 10 pieces. And we'll go from there. If we need more, we can just cut more pieces as we go. Doesn't have to be exact. You just don't want too short of pieces. Okay, so now that you have your mesh cut, we're gonna start adding it in to the swag. Now each swag is gonna have a loop on one end that's the top of it. So make sure you keep an eye on that so you know which is top and bottom. We are going to curl the ends under and then just kind of pinch together with your hands to make like a ruffle. We're gonna pick two pieces of pine, doesn't matter where you start, we're just gonna fill in all over. Stick it in, give it a couple twists, and then move on to a different spot. So you curl your ends, gather the center, and you just twist it in. And I'm gonna just kind of sporadically place them in and then I'll kind of fill in any gaps and stuff after. And we'll be adding ribbon on top, so it'll all fill in nicely.
Okay, so we have the mesh put into it. So the next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna set this aside and we're gonna start working on the bow. So I'm basically gonna do our version of like a craft bow, but with longer tails that'll kind of drape throughout the swag. So we're gonna start with the top layer of the bow. I picked five different ribbons. My bow wire. Five different ribbons and this top layer is going to be one and three fourths of a yard. The next layer is two yards. And then this one is gonna be two and an eighth. And this one's two and an eighth. And then this last one is one yard and a fourth because this one's wide. I'm not gonna do as long of tails with it. You'll see. <laughs> Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is you're going to line up the ends of this ribbon so that you can find out where the center is. Once you have the center of the ribbon, we're gonna lay it open, we're gonna make our first loop. So we're gonna center it kind of in that one. Tail's gonna go out the bottom right of the bow and then this side is gonna go up. They're not gonna cross over. They're gonna lay side by side. So this tail is shooting out the bottom right. This tail is going out the top left. So when you get your loops about the size you want, this is where you can play with it too. It doesn't have to be a certain size, whatever you like. Everyone likes bigger bows, smaller bows, it's up to you. Once you get it the size you want, you're gonna pinch across the center and I fold my wire in half so there's a little loop in the middle. I'm gonna find the ends, go around my bow, and go through that little loop so I can tighten it like a slip knot. We're gonna get that nice and snug. Pull it tight and just do a single knot. Now each additional layer that we make, we're gonna add right onto the back of the previous layer. So I leave this face down next to me so as I make the next layer, I can just add it directly onto that one. Grab your next ribbon, we're gonna do the same thing again. You're gonna line up your ends so that you can find where the center of the ribbon is. Fold it so it makes a little mark. Lay it open. Now for this next layer, I do it so the loops and the tails alternate each layer. That way you don't have a bow where all the loops are on one side and all the tails are on the one side. So for this one, the top is gonna to come down and this tail is gonna go out the bottom left of the bow. This side now is gonna go up. And this tail is gonna go out the top right of the bow. So if we flip this one over, you can see it's opposite. That way, get these loops a similar size. We'll bunch across the center. And what we're gonna do is since this one's kind of upside down, we're gonna flip this one up, upside down and add it right onto the back of this one. That way, see there's a loop here and this one has the loop there. Tail there, tail there. That way you can kind of fan it out and it looks amazing. Single knot, leave this off to the side again. We're gonna grab the next layer. Do the same thing again. Line up the ends, find the center of the ribbon. And then we're gonna start making our loop. So this one again, we'll go back to how the first layer was where the tail is coming out the bottom right of the bow. This loop is gonna go on this side with the tail going out the top left of the bow. Get it about the similar size. You just want each layer slightly bigger. That way they show. Bunch across the center. And we're gonna flip it upside down and just add it right onto the back of that previous layer. All right, next ribbon. Line up the ends so we can find the center. Now this one, this one's gonna go on this side. So your tail should be coming out the bottom left. This one's gonna go up with the tail going out the top right. Bunch across the center. I'm gonna flip it over.
single knot. And then we're gonna make our last layer. When we make the last layer, we'll, we're gonna do a double knot at the end since we're done with the bow. So this last layer, you're gonna line up your ends. You can find the center point. ginormous but bunch it across the center this ribbon is amazing all right we're gonna flip it over tie it on and this is where we're gonna double knot it so the whole bow is staying and not moving All right, take my little centerpiece so I can kind of cover where the wire is, just in the front, just in case it shows. That way it kind of blends in. Now I'm just gonna kind of tie this like so. Then I'm gonna do another knot with the wire around it so it's not going anywhere. And these little ends won't show or anything, so don't worry about that. All right, so for the next part, you're gonna figure out where you want the bow. Some people like bows towards the top. I'm gonna do this one kind of in the middle. That way my ribbon can go both directions on the flag. So, I'm going to find the center point, and it doesn't have to lay a certain direction because this bow, when it's poofed out, it's going to go like around everything. It's not going to be noticeable if you do it correctly. All right. So I'm gonna pull this nice and snug so it doesn't flip-flop on the swag at all. Do a double knot. Oops. Too much power. If you pull too tight, sometimes they break, but luckily it left a good enough amount where it won't slip out. So, perfect. I'm going to start fluffing the loops. That way I can kind of get organized and see where everything's going to lay out. You want to run your hands through all of the loops and round them out really well. This is probably one of my favorite color combos, the navy and the copper. So pretty. Okay, so now that we have fluffed up all the loops, we have all these crazy tails going everywhere like spider legs. What we are going to do is just kind of create almost a, like a loop again but this part, we're gonna use the pine of the swag to twist it so it stays into place. And then we'll bring this part out a little farther and twist that in. So I'm actually gonna start with some of the bottom layers. That way these aren't in my way and I'm not wrestling them. So we'll kind of make a loop, bunch it a little bit, and just kind of pick a good spot. Doesn't have to be perfect. So the easy thing about crafting, you don't have to be exact. Just be creative, don't stress. And then at the end, we're gonna cut the tails, so don't worry about that right now. So let's do some blue. So just find two pieces of pine, any will work, and you just kind of twist them like a twist tie. And kind of bring this one this direction. A 
Now, since this bow has mainly just the two colors, you want to kind of divide it up. I don't want all the navy on one side and all the copper on the other. So I have copper, copper, and then a navy sparkle here. So of course this blue one, I'm going to want to kind of go through this area. So it kind of divides up the colors a little bit. for the top. We'll cut this tail later. Now we'll start doing the same thing to the bottom. Okay, so we'll put this guy over here, kind of going out the side a little bit. Make sure these show. This last guy. Okay. So now we're going to kind of trim all of the tails of the ribbon just in case like later on when we stuff this more they're not hard to find so we'll kind of in the middle of doing everything start cutting these tails at least so we don't lose them later now this ribbon frays really easily so i'm going to fray check it right after cutting it so it doesn't fray before i come back around to it if you don't use fray check, get some. We have it in our shop. It is a must. Keeps all the ribbons from fraying. Nice clean edge. Works great. Just run it along the ends there. And then I always like that dovetail for my tails. This gives it a nice finished look to it.
throw some fray check on it. We'll flip it over and we'll do the top now. Glitter ones you don't usually have to fray check because the glitter kind of seals the ribbon. They usually don't unravel. It's all the fabric ones that we definitely want to fray check all the ed edges. All right, easy so far, right? Piece of cake. So flip this back over. That way we can keep in mind where the top is. Now is the fun part. We're going to add in some of these fun picks. So we are going to cut some of the branches off. That way I can kind of spread them out so they're peeking out all over. I don't want them to be too short though. So Kind of pull it out so it has a little bit of a longer wire before I snip it off. Or some, you can just pull, I guess. <laughs> be strong enough to cut this one. <laughs> Got it. Okay. So for these, we are literally just going to kind of stab it into it and just kind of twist it around some of the pieces of pine so it's not going to move. So we want them to all be spread out. So just kind of pick a place to start and just go with it. Twist some pine around it. I want them to kind of shoot out of this. And then a lot of times for the top of the swag, I like them facing kind of upward. When I get down below the bow, I like them facing downward. But it's completely up to you. It's your swag. You can do whatever you like. Thing about wired ribbon is I can keep fixing all these loops. It drives me crazy when they get all bent. <laughs> all right, next one. And I'm kind of just twisting these in with the pine and then I kind of will find the end of the wire or the end of the stem of it and kind of bend it a little bit. That way it doesn't just slip right out of the pine. Just be careful because sometimes the ends get pokey. Don't want to cut yourself. Put some down here.
flip this over so we can do the top. And for everyone watching this, how many of you have made a swag before? Is this going to be your first time making one or are you a pro at it? Let me know. Leave a comment. Ooh, let's stick this one over here. I think I'm gonna stop there for now. I have a second pick just in case, but I brought some extra ribbon, so I'm gonna kind of piece in some ribbons here and there to fill some of the gaps. So, probably like 11, around 11 inches for these would be good. I don't want them to stick outward too much. So I'm just gonna cut a couple pieces of each and I'm just gonna piece them in randomly. So there's no rhyme or reason, it doesn't have to be exact. You just kind of do what you wanna do, fill in the holes and the gaps. And then for these ribbons, I normally will cut the ends and fray check them before placing them into this. So I'm just going to go through and cut all the ends and fray check and then we'll stick them all in. All right, everyone, you got them all cut and fray checked. Let me kind of organize them a little bit better. Now I'm gonna do groups of two 
and I'm gonna be, do two different colors together. So a copper with a blue, not two blues or two coppers together. So I'm gonna make an X and then bunch in the middle and then I'm just gonna stick it in wherever. Just kind of twist. I'm gonna kind of hide the pine a little bit behind, but it'll still peek out here and there. I just didn't want too long of pieces showing. So now we'll do two of these ones. Make an X, kind of pinch around the middle. It just kind of helps fill in any gaps that you might have. Turn it over. Kind of fan them out a little bit. You don't want them to be flattened, so you want to kind of bring them up and then kind of curl them out a little. this is if you add one in somewhere and you change your mind you can always just untwist and take it back out if you want so just kind of play with it fluff everything up so I can kind of check it and see if I want to add more here and there or not. I love it though, so I'm good. All right, so there is that. You can always add in a sign or something else if you'd like, but I was trying to keep it nice and simple for this one. If you have any questions, comment and I can help you. All right, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can see all of our other tutorials that we're going to be doing. There you go. Have a great day.